Hi, good people. Today, let's look at uh, this topic known as honey, which has become a quite uh, interesting topic and uh, just a sort as a form of an introduction. Honey is always a protrusion of intestine through an abnormal opening or weakened area in the abdominal wall. So in case we have uh, any sort of weakening in the, in the abdominal wall, then uh, the intestine protrudes through the abnormal opening. At that point, we are terming it as hernia. So what are the two types of, what are the types of hernia? One, with inguinal hernia, with umbilical hernia, and with incisional hernia. So uh, for incisional hernia, it always mainly occurs due to weakness in the abdominal wall caused by previous incision. Mainly these people who have undergone some sort of surgery. So in case when we have uh, any weakness in the abdominal wall, so uh, if we have that protrusion, that becomes incisional honey. What about umbilical honey? Umbilical honey is always an opening. Umbilical opening fails to close adequately or rectus muscle is always weak. So when the rectus muscle is always weak or the umbilical opening fails to close adequately, we always at risk of developing this umbilical honey. Three, we have inguinal hernia. Inguinal hernia is always a weakness in the spermatic cord, mainly in men, and around the ligament in women, which passes through the abdominal wall into the groin area. That's all about inguinal hernia. So we've talked about the three types, inguinal, umbilical, and incisional hernia. How can we classify the types of hernia? And let's remember our definition. We've, we've really defined it as protrusion of the intestine through an abdominal opening or weakened area of abdominal wall. So uh, we can broadly classify it as either being reducible, being incarcerated, or be strangulated. Boys and girls, let us always remember that any sort of hernia, if it becomes strangulated, it's always a medical emergency. Let's start with reducible. Reducible may be replaced into the abdominal cavity by manual palpation. Probably you'll find these people, they have come with hernia, but if we can do the by, by manual manipulation and we're able to uh, replace, to return it back into the abdominal cavity, that becomes reducible. Incarcerated, it's also known as irre irreducible. You cannot push it back into place. Eh? That's about incarcerated. Then strangulated. Strangulated, this means what? There's always cut off in blood supply. So we say blood supply and intestinal flow in the herniated area is always obstructed. So when it becomes obstructed, we are risking most things. It can become gangrenous and other things. That's why I said for strangulated type of hernia, at this point, it's always a medical emergency. Kindly attend to that person. What are the risk factors? What can predispose one to this hernia, which you say that it's a protrusion of the intestine through an abnormal, abnormal opening or weakened area in the abdominal wall. What can predispose one to this type of uh, condition? Well, we talk about chronic cough. You know, yeah, that aspect of chronic cough and those people who are mainly affected with the chronic cough, they're always smokers. Eh? Then to obesity. Most of these obese people, they're always linked to the weakened abdominal muscle the musculature, the way any the muscle is meant up, they're always weakened. So they're always at risk of developing this type of condition. Three, straining during bowel movements. Those people who go to void and they are really straining, you are straining that too much. That's a risk factor of developing this hernia. Then four, heavy lifting objects. When we lift these heavy objects, mainly if we see the bodybuilders and these other people, they're always at risk of developing this type of condition. Then pregnancy. Pregnancy is always is always also a risk factor in development of hernia. Then how will now these people uh, present with uh, mainly these people with hernia? One, they'll, if the hernia protrudes over the area, ideally we are looking at clinical manifestations. One, We'll always see hernia protruding over the area when the patient stands or strains. Eh? We'll always see that protrusion. 
let's just remember the types we talked about the inguinal it might be inguinal or it might be umbilical so we'll, we'll always see the protrusion then two there's always severe pain that occurs and it mainly occurs with the strangulated one eh? strangulated we said strangulated with there's cut off in blood supply which is always a medical emergency then for also another point for strangulated hernia if it occurs it occurs with symptoms of intestinal obstructions so you said there's complete cut off of blood supply so also uh, the normal the normal the normal physiology is not occurring so most of them will always present with symptoms of hernia diagnosis how can we come up with a diagnosis of uh, this hernia one we take history then we also look at clinical features then don't forget about the risk factors that we've just talked about pregnancy heavy lifters straining during bowel movement obesity and chronic coughing such as mainly those people who the smokers eh? so all these things we always put it under that aspect of history taking then clinical features is what we see if we see the hand is protruding that becomes it also helps us in coming up with the proper diagnosis then medical and surgical management how do we how do we do one we need to do elective surgery to prevent complications of triangulation any sort of hernia let's say it's not yet uh, it's not but it's not yet uh, strangulated so if it continues staying in that place for that period of time we are risking the blood supply so it might become strangulated that's why you have said as the first mode of uh, treatment we always put them on elective surgery we are trying to prevent complications eh? then uh, for strangulated hernia involves resection of the involved bowel why are we resectioning because we've talked about strangulation we've said already we are having a cut off in the blood supply so probably this part might also become gangrenous so to this point is not beneficial for the body then there's that aspect of resection resectioning of the part of the bowel that is always involved nursing management how will we manage this patient one we need to prepare the patient for surgery if it's if it's indicated eh? with depending on the type of hernia then two we need to do general post-op care like pain management and also we can do some sort of health education then three if the patient is coughing we need uh, to teach this patient on how to splint the incision on how they hold the incision site while they are coughing then we need also to look at uh, refraining from heavy lifting for around six to eight weeks post-op because you're also risking uh, the incision site from rupturing it might also predispose or it might also cause another type of hernia something that you are trying to prevent that's about hernia any question ah thank you